a tool that can essentially create a custom firmware that you can restore to, you can downgrade to it, whatever version you wanna be on, you can be on it and you can have it with Cydia. I just can't guys, I can't believe it. Hey, what's up YouTube, it's ICU, and today I have the best jailbreak news of the past decade, potentially even ever, to share with you guys. It's the discovery and release of a brand new boot ROM exploit for A11 devices and lower. So the iPhone 10 and lower, as long as they're supported by Apple, they'll be jailbroken. It doesn't matter which firmware, it could be up to iOS 15. Whenever Apple stops supporting the iPhone 10, that's when this will essentially be phased out and no longer effective, because unfortunately, it does not work on A12 or A13 devices, but everything iPhone 10 and below is jailbroken for life now. And not only jailbroken, this also means that you can actually restore or downgrade to any firmware that was supported by the device and you don't even need to have SHSH2 blobs. So for instance, I could go back to the earliest version supported by this iPhone 10, iOS 11, and I don't have blobs for this device for iOS 11. Furthermore, the SEP isn't even supported anymore. So that stuff doesn't matter anymore. Downgrades are now possible. Heck, even dual boots are possible. So you can boot into Android on an iPhone 10 or lower, provided the work is actually done by developers to support that. But this is an incredibly low level exploit in the silicon of chips that simply cannot be patched. It can't be patched by Apple without releasing new hardware. Obviously they've done that, they discovered this this vulnerability back when iOS 12 was in beta testing. They patched it and closed it for A12 and of course A13. But everything else is jailbroken for life, can't be patched by Apple. The last time this happened was the Lime Rain exploit in 2010 for the iPhone 4 guys. So this is the biggest news ever because it actually supports even more devices. Literally, we're talking millions of devices across the globe. So we're about to get into the nitty gritty of this, what the security researcher who discovered this new boot ROM exploit has said about it up until this point. But first, I just wanted to say that this doesn't only benefit just the iPhone 10 and lower, it actually benefits above the iPhone 10 as well. Because although those devices, A12 and A13, are not actually supported, this is going to have a huge impact on the world of jailbreaking. Just think about it for a second. Millions and I mean millions of devices will be able to jailbreak on every single firmware. More developers who wanna create tweaks will be attracted to the scene because they can jailbreak on any firmware. More individuals will also come. We're gonna have more eyeballs on the community in general. It's going to create more buzz because you don't have to stay on a targeted firmware. There's not going to be just one or two jailbreaks a year now. Literally every single firmware will be jailbroken. Of course, there will still probably be just one or two jailbreaks for the latest devices but the entire community around it will be brought up. More brilliant minds will be attracted to the world of jailbreaking who will do the security research required to discover new kernel vulnerabilities for A12 and A13, which will be required to get them supported in future jailbreaks on iOS 13 and up as well. So, the entire community is going to be up-leveled by this, guys. I just can't even explain or convey how amazing and how incredible this actually is. So now let's go ahead and get into this and talk about all of the tweets surrounding this announcement, all of the pertinent ones anyway. So security researcher Axiom X, who if you're not following on Twitter already, be sure you do so, tweeted out, quote, Epic jailbreak, introducing Checkmate, a permanent unpatchable boot ROM exploit for hundreds of millions of iOS devices. Most generations of iPhones and iPads are vulnerable, from iPhone 4S A5 chip to iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 A11 chip. So even those devices that aren't supported, like the iPhone 4S, iPhone 5, 5S, and of course 6, will actually still be jailbreakable. As long as developers will do the work required, we can jailbreak and get city on them. We don't have to have new kernel vulnerabilities now to jailbreak. We just have to have that one boot ROM exploit and the jailbreak patches required to get everything functioning properly. But new security research isn't really required because a boot ROM exploit is the lowest level exploit. It jailbreaks everything. So essentially think of it like this. The silicon sits here, 
The operating system sits way up here. There are a lot of checks in between. There are a lot of things above that and really there's nothing below that. So as long as this right here is exploited, everything above that is also exploited. That's the way it works, guys. So guys, I just, again, cannot even convey how awesome this is and how excited I am. It means jailbreaking is going to thrive, as I've been saying. He followed that up with, quote, the last iOS device with a public boot ROM exploit until today was iPhone 4, which was released in 2010, which we've already talked about. This is possibly the biggest news in iOS jailbreak community in years. I'm releasing my exploit for free, which is why I wanted to specifically highlight this tweet, for the benefit of iOS jailbreak and security research community. So real MVP here, guys. Axiom X has breathed new life into the jailbreak community with the release of this exploit. And he confirmed that what he's releasing today, quote, is not a full jailbreak with Cydia, just an exploit. And that additional development and research is required before we have a public utility. Now that's where Pwn to Own is about to come in. I'm going to talk about that in just a second, but first I wanted to finish up talking about these tweets from Axiom X. So he said with a follow-up quote, exploit release today supports, and he included CPUs, the earliest being the A5 up until the A11. Now he says others will be added soon, meaning others older than A11. It is not perfectly reliable yet. It uses a race condition and I only tested it on my MacBook Pro. Now a race condition means that the exploit has to race for success. So it might not have a 100% success every single time, but it does mean that again, these devices are permanently able to be jailbroken. And he goes into how he discovered it. Quote, during iOS 12 betas in summer 2018, Apple patched a critical use after free vulnerability in iBoot USB code. This vulnerability can only be triggered over USB and requires physical access. It cannot be exploited remotely. I am sure many researchers have seen that patch. So what that means is that this is going to be a tethered jailbreak, guys. You're going to have to plug your device into your computer and rerun a portion of the jailbreak every single time to exploit your device's boot ROM. That's just how this works because of the low level nature of it. You can't use something once you're already booted into the system. It has to be deployed from a computer. But again, guys, permanent jailbreaks, I mean, come on, it's definitely going to be worth it. And with some of the developments in the latter support for Lime Rain, we actually saw something called a semi-tethered or semi-untethered jailbreak, which means that you can still reboot your device. See, in the very first days, unless it was actually exploited, you couldn't boot up at all, and you basically had a brick until you plugged it into your computer. So if it died or you turned it off, you needed a computer to get it to boot back up. Well, again, in the later days of the Lime Rain exploit, you were actually able to reboot thanks to a number of developments by Muscle Nerd. Real MVP there, guys. But at any rate, you should still be able to boot your device back up. Just can't use anything jailbreak related until you plug into a computer. Kind of like today, how you have to use Uncover to repatch the kernel, but you need a computer because of the low level nature of this. And then he said, quote, that's how I discovered it. It is likely at least a couple other researchers were able to exploit this vulnerability after discovering the patch. The patch is easy to find, but the vulnerability is not trivial to exploit on most devices. So this means that he did have to do a large amount of work to get this thing to function properly after just discovering that patch because it was relatively easy to see. I mean, you could tell that Apple patched it in iOS 12 beta as we talked about earlier. And then quote, a boot ROM exploit for older devices makes iOS better for everyone. Jailbreakers and tweak developers will be able to jailbreak their phones on latest version and they will not need to stay on older iOS versions waiting for jailbreak. They will be safer. Quote, it will also be better for security researchers interested in Apple's bug bounty. They will not need to keep vulnerabilities on hand so that they will have access they will need for their research. More vulnerabilities might get reported to Apple right away. Because again, you have a device that's essentially pwned by one exploit, this incredibly low level chip exploit. So guys, that's everything related to the announcement, but we're going to talk about Pwn to Own because it doesn't stop there, the fantastic news. Basically, Pwn just reiterates that devices will be jailbreakable for life, and then he says that, quote, I might start working on a tool to generate custom IPSWs, 
aka firmware restore files with Cydia and kernel patches. You should be able to jailbreak pretty much every firmware with something like that. Wow, guys, absolutely just, I can't even believe it. Wow, we might have a new Ponage tool or Snow Breeze coming very soon. A tool that can essentially create a custom firmware that you can restore to, you can downgrade to it. Whatever version you wanna be on, you can be on it and you can have it with Cydia. I just can't, guys, I can't believe it. This is fantastic news, again. Developers are even saying that they're going back from their iPhone XS Max or iPhone 11 to an iPhone 10 as their daily driver just for the sole purpose of having a Pwn device. And then Pwn even retweeted someone who attempted the exploit and he said in a follow-up, quote, this is the most powerful exploit for modern iPhones ever. It is actually trivial to install a custom IPSW and make it give TFP0 to uncover. Meaning the hardest part, relatively speaking, is over. We're going to have jailbreaks for every firmware, as I've been saying throughout this video. And then I also wanted to talk about this. This is very important. He says, quote, the boot ROM exploit may take some time to implement in a jailbreak, but I am interested in it. I will still be continuing the development of the uncovered jailbreak and will soon push a major stability update for A12, stay tuned. So that's definitely what those of us on A12 need, but everyone lower, A11 and lower, will also potentially be saved once again by Pwn to Own for every new firmware that's released by Apple. So that's it guys, that's the best news in the world of jailbreaking over the past decade. We're going to be jailbroken for the lifetime of the iPhone 10. Every device will benefit, whether it's newer or whether it's older, because of course, older ones will be jailbroken for life. For newer ones, there are going to be more people on the scene. Hopefully more kernel vulnerabilities and exploits will be discovered and rolled into new jailbreak utilities, whether it be uncover or future utilities from, heck, even new jailbreak developers. So guys, that's it for today's video. Be sure to drop it a huge thumbs up. Subscribe if you have yet to. We're going to keep you covered every step of the way, anytime there's any new development surrounding this. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.